Hi everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Before we start, may I ask for your help please to lower the discrepancy between the subscribed and unsubscribed viewers by of course, subscribing, if you haven't yet. Please help me reach the 1000 subscribers before the end of this year. Alright. I have an 11.6 inch Asus netbook here, which is about 4 to 5 years old now. Since it is a netbook, it only has an Intel Celeron N4000 chip with 4 gigs of RAM. It's quite slow now, so I only use this for basic document management and for downloading large files which I can leave overnight, since the netbook consumes less electricity. Aiming on this is no question, terrible, and we also tried using this on a Zoom meeting, and the Intel Celeron N4000 chip just can't keep up. The screen you're seeing now is being recorded by OBS within this netbook, and as you can see, the recording is not that great. It has too many drop frames for almost every 2 to 5 seconds. Currently, I only have Chrome with three tabs, a task manager, and OBS open right now, but the machine can barely keep up with the currently opened application. Basically, multitasking is a big challenge for this laptop. So, imagine my surprise when I received a notification for a Windows 11 update on this netbook. I thought the minimum hardware requirement for Windows 11 is an 8th Gen i3 chips, but it turns out that I am wrong, since even the Celeron chips received the notification. I have been thinking for a week now if I should update the Celeron laptop to Windows 11 or not, since I'm afraid that Celeron might not work properly on it and might only cause more problem for me. But considering that the i5 6th gen laptop I upgraded to Windows 11 has significantly improved its performance, and also for the sake of answering the question if Intel Celeron can run on Windows 11, I thought, why not give it a try? I can always roll it back anyway. In case you want to learn how I forced install Windows 11 on an i5 6th gen laptop, which is an unsupported machine, click the link that will pop up in the screen, which you can also find in the video description below. As a general rule of thumb, before upgrading, make sure that your Windows 10 version is on the latest and greatest. So, click on the check updates first. If something appears, update it. Repeat until no more Windows 10 updates appears. If you want to learn more about the things to do before, during and after a Windows 11 upgrade, click the link that will pop up in the screen, or follow the same link available in the video description. Alright. The netbook is up to date for Windows 10. Here goes nothing. Let's download and install. Time check at 7.07 pm. After one and a half hour, we are at 99% of the download which is faster compared to what I did for the i5 6th gen laptop. Another 13 minutes and we are at 100% download. This 100% took a while though. It had stayed on a 100% for the next 1 hour and 20 minutes. At around 10 pm, the download is finally finished and installation started. Although the download was faster here compared to the i5 6th gen laptop, the installation is another story. After more than 5 hours already, we are still only at 95% installation. It's already 3 am. Looks like I'm pulling an all-nighter here. The remaining 5% for the installation took another 4 minutes. We are now at a 100%. Add another 9 minutes and we are now ready to restart. This is after about 8 and half hours from when we start clicking the download and install. Alright it is restarting now. Hopefully this will be faster now. Well, I was wrong, it still took time, but, at last. We are at the boot up screen of Windows 11 now. This is after more than 9 hours now. It is past 4 am. Let's log in. There you go. The Intel Celeron is now on a Windows 11 OS. Let me quickly show you what this netbook looks like. We have successfully installed Windows 11 on a Celeron device. Now, let's check its performance. Okay. We are back to the OBS recording. Let me show you that we are still on the same netbook. The Intel Celeron N4000. With 4 gigs of RAM. And we are now running under Windows 11 Home Single Language version 21H2 and version 22000.318, which is the latest Windows 11 version as of this video recording. Another rule of thumb, after a Windows upgrade, we should check for any new Windows 11 updates. We found two new updates. Let's download now. Time check. 421 AM. The performance numbers here in the task manager is identical to the numbers when it is on Windows 10 at 90% CPU and around 70 to 85% memory. But if we look at the CPU usage, it is being eaten by OBS Studio. Later, I'll show you the task manager numbers when there is no OBS open. And look at that, we are installing now. That was fast, after only 8 minutes. Time check at 4.31 AM. The whole updates took only 10 minutes, which is good, so I can go to sleep already. Let's restart now. Okay. We have restarted. 
Let's do another update check just to ease sure. On the performance check, we still have 90% CPU usage and around 70% memory. I'm not sure what is this Windows audio device graph isolation, but it's the one eating up more than a quarter of the CPU usage. Let me try to end task it. While the updates is still checking, let me show you again that we are still on the same machine. As you can see in the details here. After the updates earlier, we are still on build 318. Going back to the task manager, the Windows audio device graph isolation is back again eating the CPU resources. Okay. We are up to date. We are sure now that we are running on the latest and greatest Windows 11 version. Let me replicate the first part of the video, when we are still on Windows 10, where there's Chrome with three tabs open, Task Manager and OBS which is already running and recording now. I don't see any improvements on the speed, while opening the Chrome here. Although, no difference is actually good since that means there's no degradation in the speed as compared to Windows 10. You can see the OBS recording still pauses from time to time, and YouTube hasn't even loaded the page yet. Yeah, it is still really slow. I already got to sleep and upon waking up, I tried playing around the laptop. What I noticed is, when loading or opening an application, the opening part is as slow as with Windows 10. But once it is loaded. It is actually faster to use the application. That is, without OBS. I am feeling adventurous and now trying to download Asphalt 9 Legends to see if it can run on the Celeron netbook. As you can see here, without OBS, the CPU usage is significantly lower at 16 to 17 percent only, compared to 90 percent, when recording an OBS. Just making sure that we are on the same Celeron N4000 netbook here. Okay. Asphalt has been installed. Let's open it. It took about 7 minutes before the game was fully loaded. Let's enter the information here. Here we go. Let's try to play it. Oh no! It is a manual control. Now you know I suck big time on asphalt manual control. I am really impressed. I can play asphalt with minimal to no lags at all. This is great. I don't think this would be possible on Windows 10. Okay. Let's stop this demo. I'm just highlighting here how really bad I am on playing Asphalt. Let me close the game now. CPU usage is at 70 to 80%, but it is going down now. Just showing you again that we are in the same Celeron netbook here running on Windows 11. CPU is up and down between 37 to 80%. I mentioned earlier that on Windows 10, this netbook is having a hard time making video calls in Zoom. So, I tried it now. Loading the application still took time, but once it is loaded, it is working perfectly as you can see here. I am on a video call with myself. How lonely can you be? So, going back to the question. Can Windows 11 run on an Intel Celeron machine? The answer is absolutely yes. The performance difference that I experienced when I upgraded an i5 6th gen laptop is a lot bigger compared to upgrading the Celeron netbook, but the quantifying keyword there is there is an improvement on the performance. Loading of application is still slow, sometimes it might even be slower than Windows 10 before, but once the application is loaded, you'll definitely have a faster experience on using that application. On Windows 10 before, when I am copying files from an external storage to the internal hard drive, or vice versa, you almost can't do anything else since the copying process of Windows Explorer application takes up most of the memory and CPU usage. But now in Windows 11, that is load balanced way better. So even when copying large files, you can still multitask. Actually, the whole multitasking has greatly improved here in Windows 11. I'm not saying that Windows 11 has magically turned the Celeron chip to an i9 11th gen speed. It is still slow, but on par, sometimes slightly above average, compared to what you would expect on a Celeron. And comparing to what I experience on Windows 10, this is a great improvement. I think the main difference of Windows 11 to Windows 10 is the proper handling of memory and CPU usage. You will notice this on multiple tabs in Chrome, where it doesn't need to reload a web page anymore when you switch from tab to tab. You can do other things even when you are copying a large file. You can open more applications at the same time, and once those applications are opened, you experience minimal to zero lags from them. And did you saw that I can play Asphalt and do Zoom video calls now. So, not only can Windows 11 run on a Celeron machine, it can also improve the overall usage of a Celeron netbook. 
If ever you receive a Windows 11 notification in your Intel Celeron device, I highly recommend that you go through with it. Alright? I hope this helps. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you love it, please consider subscribing to the channel. Nilasuj for watching. Nabair.